Last season, the Chicago Bulls went 22-43, and putting them at 11th in the Eastern Conference. They missed the playoffs, obviously. Their top performers were Zach Levine, Lowry Markkinen, Wendell Carter Jr., and Kobe White. Their more interesting players are Daniel Gafford and Chandler Hutchinson. Zach Levine put up 25.5 points per game, 4 assists per game on 45% from the field and 38% from 3 on 8.1 attempts per game. Zach Levine is a great offensive option. Let's get the empty stats narrative out the way immediately. I don't know why this is a thing. I don't know why empty stats is like some like somebody has to put the ball in the hoop. If it were empty stats, it would be something like 27 points per game on 30% from the field. No, Zach Levine is still putting up 25 points per game on very efficient splits. So it's definitely not empty stats. Let's get that out of the way. Now, just talking about on the court stuff, Zach Levine is a freak athlete. Um, he's one of the best dunkers and slashers in our league. Incredibly athletic. He can get to the rim whenever he wants because of his athleticism, because of his improved handle. Also mainly because he's improved as a shooter throughout his first couple of years in the league. So Zach Levine has really turned into somebody who is an inside-out scorer. Only 22.4% of his field goal attempts come from mid-range. Um, he's a great shooter from three on a high clip and obviously he's an athletic finisher. And he's a better playmaker than the media says. Um, getting four assists as a off guard. So yeah, Zach Levine is one of the best young offensive threats in our league, but he has defensive question marks. He has a lot of miscues in terms of rotations and whatnot from what I've seen in his first, what, three years in Chicago. Um, that also is reflected in the defensive rating on and off splits. Chicago had a better defensive rating by nine points with him off the court than with him on the court. So hopefully Zach Levine can finally figure it out on defense. Lowry Markkinen put up 15 points per game, six rebounds per game on 42.5% from the field and 34.5% from three on 6.3 attempts per game. Lowry Markkinen, another player gifted offensively. He's a seven footer, pretty mobile for being a seven footer. He can put the ball on the floor. He has a pretty good handle for being a seven footer and he can finish at the rim. He's a good shooter. So he's a demigod or somebody who has demigod capabilities. You've seen this in his rookie year and in his sophomore year. This is the stuff that he was doing in those first two years when he was unleashed uh, when he wasn't limited by his trash ass coach but in his third year he really stalled mainly because of his usage from Jim Boylan who was telling him to really just sit out camp out on the perimeter and hit his threes that's not how you get the most out of somebody like Lowry Markkinen. Lowry Markkinen's also been lackluster defensively mainly because of just his build. He's not really quick enough to keep up with perimeter oriented fours and he's not an intimidating presence on the interior. Yeah, he's kind of a tweener on defense. I don't know who you could have him guard consistently. So going into his fourth year, you hope that he can be used better under Billy Donovan, who's just a better coach than Jim Boylan. Um, also, this is Lowry's contract year, so this is pretty important stuff for him to get his payday. Wendell Carter Jr. put up 11 points per game, 9 rebounds on 53.4% from the field. Wendell is probably the Bulls' best defender this year. Last year, you could argue who it was between him and Chris Dunn, but now with Chris Dunn being gone, Wendell is their best defender. He's not really a dynamic rim protector. He's kind of just like an all-around solid post defender, solid in the post. He's a good pick and roll defender, solid on switches, and he's pretty good help side. In terms of offensive game, he's got a good mid-range shot. Um, from 10 to 16 feet, he shot 51.5% from the field, which is pretty damn good. But other than that, uh, he might be a little limited offensively. He's not going to be a go-to low post guy, like somebody you just throw the ball to down low and just ask him to get a bucket. That's not really going to be who Wendell Carter is. Um, but in terms of playmaking, I haven't seen that much like with my eyes, but I've heard from a lot of people that he does have some playmaking potential as a big man. Kobe White put up 13 points per game, 2.7 assists per game on 39.4% from the field and 35.4% from three on 5.8 attempts. Kobe White, another player who's offensively gifted as a shot creator in the backcourt. He didn't really show that shot creation consistently to start off the year but he did so in February, like right before the hiatus. In February, he averaged 20.1 points per game on 43.3% from the field and 41.1% from three. So based off of that month, you kind of see his scoring potential, somebody that can go off the dribble, somebody that can hit the three point shot, catch and shoot, create it a little bit. Kobe White has a lot of scoring potential, but his playmaking is kind of the downside 
of him, especially on this Bulls team, his playmaking is not good enough for him to be a point guard. And the Bulls already have a scoring guard at shooting guard in Zach Levine. So it's kind of a bit redundant with you throwing in Kobe White, who is really a shooting guard playing point guard. So then that's really what raises the questions regarding if he could play with Zach Levine. He's going to have to really improve his playmaking ability because you can't just have two shooting guards in the backcourt and just say, oh, fuck it, make it work. And then Gafford and Hutchison are interesting players because they're young and I've heard good things about them. I haven't seen much of them play, so I'm not going to act like I know about them. They just need to get more minutes. I know Bulls fans hated Boylan for not giving Daniel Gafford minutes last year, so. In the offseason, the Bulls were quiet on two of the fronts because they didn't make any trades and they didn't make many significant signings. But in the draft, they surprised everybody by taking Patrick Williams at number four. So Patrick Williams was somebody who I think in my draft, my mock draft, I had going in the late, I think I had him going in the eight to 12 range or eight to 10 range, something like that. Nowhere near number four. Chicago took him at number four. I think I had Denny Av Avdia going to Chicago at number four because they did need a small forward. Um, they have a young player with upside at every position except small forward. So I thought they would go small forward and they did, but they took Patrick Williams. I can understand it. I can understand why they went after Patrick Williams because of his defense. He is the Roco prospect of this draft. The multi-positional defender that can guard probably two through four on ball. He can switch all around the court. He just he's just a natural defender and that's what's going to come easy to him in the NBA. He's going to have to develop the three point shot to really be this 3 and D wing or this 3 and D small ball four or whatever, however you want to categorize him. I mean, that wasn't the issue of them drafting him. It was just where they drafted him because you could argue that they could have traded down to take Patrick Williams at like number seven or eight because I don't think he would have gone four or five or six if the Bulls didn't take him and they traded down. But hey, at the end of the day, if you get your guy in the draft, that's all that matters. I've seen one preseason game of Patrick Williams and he looked pretty confident on offense. Like he was taking some, he was taking three point shots, no hesitation. He took a lot of floaters, some like fading post hooks and he was hitting them. So um, for somebody who's coming into the league, who many people, many scouts believed was going to be raw on offense. Early on, he's showing some signs that he has the confidence on that end. So looking at the depth chart at the guard positions, the Bulls have Levine, Kobe White, Tomas Sadoransky, and Denzel Valentine. At the forward positions, they have Lowry Markkinen, Otto Porter Jr., Patrick Williams, and Chandler Hutchison. And at the center positions, they have Wendell Carter Jr. and Daniel Gafford. Coaching them is Billy Donovan, who I think won co-coach of the year last year. Don't quote me on that, though. The job he did in OKC has to be credited. Obviously, the emergence of SGA, you got to give him credit. Chris Paul really proving all the doubters wrong, you got to give him credit. But um, you also got to give coach Billy Donovan credit too, who had a lot of people really bagging on him for the lack of playoff success he had when he had Paul George and Russell Westbrook on the team uh, to really respond in that fashion and really overachieved with that OKC team who a lot of people thought would be the worst team in the league. You gotta credit Billy Donovan with that. Protecting the starting lineup, I think it'll be Kobe White and Levine in the backcourt, Otto Porter Jr. in the starting lineup to start the season. I think they'll start Otto Porter Jr. Uh, Markinen at the four and Wendell at the five. Projecting the record, I think they'll go around 25 and 47. I think they'll be a 12th seed in the East. The Bulls got better, but so did a lot of teams in the East in the range that the Bulls are going to be in, like chasing an eight seed. Teams in that realm, like the Wizards, they got better. Uh, the Hawks, they got a lot better. They're like in between the turmoil of the Eastern Conference and then the eighth seed chasers in the Eastern Conference. They're right in between those two tiers. They're going to be better than the Knicks, Pistons, and Cavs, but they're going to be worse than teams like the Magic, uh, Wizards, and Hawks. Like I said, they got a coaching upgrade in Billy Donovan, way better than Eggman. Kobe White and Wendell Carter Jr. are a year more experienced. You're going to hope for a healthy year for Otto Porter Jr. who's really been... Wait, is he a junior as well? Or is he just Otto Porter? I can't remember. 
but you're gonna hope for a healthy year from him because he's been really injury riddled ever since he came to Chicago and maybe you hope for an instant impact from Patrick Williams as this guy who can really just provide some beneficial time for you on the defensive end which is really something this Bulls team needed so obviously I think the Bulls are gonna miss the playoffs um, they're still rebuilding they're testing their current young core they're testing what they can do together really trying to see who's going to be a vital part of this team for the future the chicago bulls have a young player with promise at every position one through five they have two dynamic scorers in their backcourt in kobe white and zach levine they have a promising multi-positional defender in patrick williams at the three they have a mobile stretch four that can drive to the rim in lowry markinen and they have a solid low post defender with playmaking and shooting potential in Wendell Carter Jr. However, questions arise regarding whether all these players can coexist. Can Levine and White play in the same backcourt with neither one being a natural facilitator? Is Patrick Williams more of a 4 than a 3? Does this make marketing expendable? These are questions for new front office exec Arturis Karnisovic to answer in the upcoming restricted and unrestricted free agencies for Lowry and Zach in the future. But speaking of the present, the Bulls definitely made improvements as a team, but with the Eastern Conference bottom half getting better, I don't see playoff basketball in Chicago for the upcoming postseason. Wave, I was on like last week.